to run through this example, first go ahead and visit the AP Monitor modeling language uh, website at apmonitor.com, select the optimization course, and then go down to the two bar truss problem. And down below, you'll see a, uh, a file that you can download, a zip file. Uh, go ahead and download that and extract it. Now this is a part of the homework problem, a tutorial for the homework problem that uh, is perhaps one of the more difficult parts of the problem. So I've prepared both a MATLAB and a Python script. First of all, I'm going to go through the Python uh, and edit with Notepad++. Now I've already typed it out, but let me go ahead and just uh, type it out again so that uh, I can explain each of the lines. And uh, what I'm going to do is, first of all, uh, just include some comments there. I'm going to um, you know, load the libraries from APM. And then also I need to import a random a random number that's just built into the uh, to the Python base package. You don't need to download a separate package uh, for uh, rand int or random um, and uh, numpy as well. Um, you know that one is uh, something you do need to download. Let's first of all specify my server. I can either use the XPS or the BYU server. I'm going to go ahead and use the BYU for for this application. And I'm going to name it two bar. I'm going to put a random number there. This is the reason why I needed the random number package, just so I don't conflict with uh, another uh, user who has the same application name at my IP address. And then I'm going to optimize at mesh points. So I'm going to go from 40 to 85 in increments of 5 uh, for the x-axis, and then 45 to 90 in increments of 5. And so my width and load are just going to be uh, the result of the mesh grid from NumPy. Uh, feeding it the X and Y that I have there for the, the vectors. And then I'm going to clear any previous application. I'm going to use the APM command uh, clear all to clear my server. And then I'm going to load, use the APM underbar load, uh, load my model file to the server. Next I'm going to specify some variables. These are going to be fixed values and I'm going to have those be width and then also load. Now the reason why I need to declare these is so I can access certain parameters of those certain properties. Uh, in this case I'm going to uh, be modifying the measured values of those and be able to change them within these nested for loops. So I'm going to go uh, have a nested for loop with i and j. I'm going to go from uh, over all the values of the width and also load as well and uh, I'm going to print a message at each cycle. This is you know, not required. And then uh, you know, just the, co the continuation character is just the, the backslash there. And then print the width and then also the load value as well. Okay, so I have this nested, these nested loops. And the reason why I want to do that is I need to re-optimize my problem at these different values of width and then also load. So I'm going to input with the APM mes function, the values of width and load, and I can do that because I declared those as fixed values up above. So it created an interface for those variables. <clears throat> Next, I want to solve the optimization problem uh, with those new values of width and load. And if you go back and take a look at the problem statement, you'll see uh, this is par this is part number four of the uh, problem statement. And then I'm going to uh, access the app status. That, now that is the uh, application status, and uh, if it's going to, if it's successful, its status is going to equal one. Okay, so first of all, I want to record the values uh, and retrieve the solution if it was successful, and I'll do that uh, just there in the if statement. So if the status equals one, then go ahead and get the solution in the results and array variables there. And then I'm going to just print the results. Okay, so I'm not going to feed that into a, uh, a another array. If you want to generate a 3D plot, you'd have to put that array value in as an element of a larger array. Um, and then if it, it's not successful, I'll just print infeasible uh, solution. Uh, if you're going to be recording that in an array, you might want to record it as uh, not a number. Okay, now I'm going to do MATLAB as well. Now MATLAB, um, you know, basically I'm doing the same thing that I did in Python. It's just I'm going to also generate some plots within MATLAB, the 3D plot. And here instead of import uh, APM, I'm just going to add path to my, um, you know, to my APM folder so I can access the files. I can either use the XPS or BYU server. Again, I'll use the BYU server uh, in this case. 
And now here I'm going to also just load a random number between 1 and 1,000. Um, I've got to convert the integer to a string uh, so that that can, can become part of my application name. <clears throat> then I'm going to use the mesh grid. Now th in this case I'll go from 40 to 80 increments of 5 and 45 to 85 increments of 5. Um, so about seven, uh, about seven intervals for each of those, seven, eight intervals. Uh, now I, I'm going to get the size of my width, width and load. Those are going to be matrices now, and then I'm going to visit all of those points in the matrix uh, between width and load. Okay, so now uh, what I want to do is go ahead and clear all, clear everything from the server, load my model file. Again, same commands that I had in Python, and uh, so now, um, now I'm going to input, uh, you know, the parameters that change each cycle. This is again, this is the APM info function. Just declare those as FVs. You can declare those as FVs, MVs, SVs, or CVs. And uh, depending on what types they are, the width and load have to be declared as parameters um, to be able to make them fixed values or, or feed forward variables. Um, okay, again, nested for loops. I'm going to go over all of my rows and all of my columns and just an increment or a counter there on, on what cycle I'm, I'm on. I know I'm going to have a rows times columns number total, um, but K is going to be my incrementer, so that, that is going to tell me what uh, cycle of the total I'm on. And then I also want to print out the width and the load there. <clears throat> okay, now. Uh, I can either do num to string, that'll print out a floating point number, or int to string, that'll print out an integer. Okay, APM mes, that's, um, you know, that, that is going to input my width values at the ij location, and uh, input those to the server, modify those so I can re-optimize and change it and obtain a new weight, uh, optimal weight value. Now I'm going to be plotting, I'm going to be plotting the width um, versus the load. Those are going to be the x and y axes, and then the weight is going to be the uh, the z axis. So this is another way, instead of using the APM mes and the APM info route, you can also just load a CSV file to the server. So here I'm creating line one and two. Those are they're going to be my CSV lines, and then I'm going to uh, clear a CSV and then load the new one to the server. So that um, that's another route. That's another route to uh, transfer data to the server. Um, you can do that with a data file, a comma separated value file, or with the uh, APM mes uh, function. Okay, now again, I'm going to solve that uh, problem that I just uh, updated, and then now I'm going to see if the solution is good. I'm going to get the status there. If it's going to equal 1, then it's good. It's a successful solution. If it's not equal to 1, it either means infeasible solution or max iterations or something else. Some other problem happened when it's equal to 0. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to retrieve the solution. And this does it a little bit differently than Python. But uh, my solution is going to be z dot weight, z dot um, So that, that, is, that is my solution. I'm going to return that into a matrix. Uh, the same size, same size as the load, um, the load value above, and uh, and also the width. Um, those are same dimensions in the end. And I'm also going to record the height diameter. Those are not uh, plotted, although you may be interested in creating a plot of load and width versus height as well. Okay, so height and diameter are design variables. And if, if it's not successful, um, then I'm just going to give it an, a not a number. Okay, so NAN is not a number, so it won't plot those values when I generate my uh, my plot later. Okay, now in MATLAB you do have to end with the end uh, command uh, for the if statements or uh, for statements. Uh, now I'm going to plot my results. This is going to use the surf C, the, the surface color plot, and then give it a title, and then also an X label and a Y label. So these are just going to appear on the uh, on the trend, uh, for just for Figure One. Okay, so this is uh, this is my figure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run it. So I click the Run button to run, and I'm going to bring up my MATLAB command window. Okay, so you can see it going through. 
uh, the different cycles. It's going to go through all 81 of those. This is what it would do in Python as well, and then it, it generates the plot. So you can see some of the points are missing. So those mean that it was infeasible at the top, but then you can see it slope up. So as you increase the width um, of the of the two bar truss, that it's is going to require a heavier structure to be able to support. Uh, the uh, the load. Okay, so as the load increases as well, you also have a have to have a heavier weight. You know, uh, thicker tubes or otherwise. Okay, well that concludes the uh, the demonstration here with Python and MATLAB for the uh, two bar truss problem.